This is ClueCon Weekly, the official free switch web show produced and broadcasted directly from Free Switch. ClueCon Weekly features live updates from the Free Switch developers and presentations from various pioneers of communications technology. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions, the official consulting firm of the Free Switch Open Source Project. Get help from the experts. Visit freeswitch.com. ClueCon, the premier technology conference for telecom, WebRTC, IoT, and all things maker. ClueCon is held every year in Chicago, Illinois, and offers an all-day hackathon and four days of technology-rich presentations from developers around the world. Learn more at ClueCon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. Hello, and welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Today is November 1st, 2017, and our guest today will be William King from FlowRoute. FlowRoute has some awesome new announcement for you guys today, but first some of our news and announcements. Uh, if you're joining us at IT Expo in February in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida, come stop by. Free Switch will be there. We're very excited. Come say hello. And don't forget to save the date for ClueCon 2018. Uh, it's going to be earlier this year, taking place from July 23rd to July 26th, so save that date. And register now to take advantage of our early bird special. You can save $600 if you're staying at the hotel by registering with the code CC2018 Early Bird. You can find that code and that announcement on our Facebook page and our Twitter. Uh, and in a new segment, we will be taking questions from the audience or the community, uh, and we'll pick a couple to answer live on air. So if you've got some questions for the developers or anything in particular that you'd like answered, or if you'd like to see a demo of anything, uh, please reach out to us. You can submit the questions through our Facebook, Twitter, HipChat, IRC, or on the mailing list. Uh, and be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest and greatest free switch and ClueCon news. And that's it for your announcements today. Let's head over to our guest. Our guest today is William King from FlowRoute, and he's got some exciting news for you today. They've got uh, some cool stuff going on over there. Oh, thanks, Kathleen. Yeah, FlowRoute today is announcing MMS GA. We've had a private beta running for several months, and we can now MMS enable uh, bidirectional for both toll-free and US uh, long code. So if you have a local phone number or toll-free number for your business, uh, FlowRoute can now do SMS and MMS for you, inbound and outbound. So let me jump right in real quick on a couple of these slides. And uh, there's a video by Doug. We'll actually be going through on how to enable this later this uh, presentation. Quick on FlowRoute, founded in 2007, became the first uh, software-centric carrier in 2015. 2,400 active customers, and we have been ranked as the best uh, support uh, across the industry. We build out this functionality through something we call the hyper network. We're able to handle all the heavy lifting of real-time communications infrastructure and present it to our customers as the hyper network, providing all of the web, API, uh, anti-fraud and porting functionality in a nice simplified interface. So the new announcement today is MMS. Uh, we can now do both your voice, SMS, and MMS all through a single provider and through API that we have documented on developer.flowroute.com. Okay. Adding MMS actually expands the customer experience for you. So not only can you just do texting to customer base, but you can now do uh, video uh, and audio, and pictures as well. Some of the use cases that we've talked to some of our customers about, doing uh, messaging for notifications, uh, appointment reminders. Uh, people have seen several times about doing two-factor authentication and validation through security, uh, updates on delivery. But now with MMS, you can do additional things. Uh, some of the use cases include even for insurance companies, 
being able to enable sending pictures of an accident, uh, sending a PDF as an example of the insurance quote, being able to do QR codes if you're trying to take a picture of something. Uh, we actually had somebody on our side uh, or one of our employees look at a way to take a picture of a uh, beverage, in this particular case was a beer, send it through an image recognition system, tie that into an additional information lookup, and then send back over text information about that particular beer, what its rating was, whether or not it fits that person's taste profile, etc. And the use cases are incredible. All right. We can jump into a quick video of how Fluoride MMS works with a, a demo. Yeah, we feel. Yep, just one second. Um, as Dave mentioned earlier, my name is Doug Waller. I'm the product owner over our messaging product line here at FlowRoute. And I'd like to give a quick overview of how messaging at FlowRoute actually works and how it relates to you as a customer. And actually go into a bit of a technical demo to show you just how easy it is to actually set up both inbound and outbound SMS and then MMS. So to start out with, on a super high level, you can consider FlowRoute as your gateway to the mobile operator network. Whether you're trying to send a message or receive a message, we're going to be the interface that's connecting you to all of the mobile numbers in the United States and Canada. In the MMS use case, all you need to do is provide us with a public media URL that's stored on something like an Amazon S3 bucket or another online hosting solution and post that to our API. Um, and it's worth mentioning that all of our messaging APIs are providing RESTful interfaces that use JSON for their formatting. So if you're to post that media URL with your to and from number to our API, we'll actually be able to send that MMS out to the mobile operator network. And the same thing goes for inbound. If we receive an MMS on any of your flow route numbers, we'll assemble an HTTP post and include the media URL in it and send that to you and you can store it in your local media servers that you can serve it to your users. All right, so we're actually going to jump out of the keynote here and actually do a live demonstration of this. Um, and one thing that's worth mentioning here as well, all the information that I'm going to be running through right now is available on our developer website, which is developer.flowout.com. I'm going to be skimming through a couple articles very quickly um, and doing some live demonstrations off of it. But if you want to go back and run this on your own, there's full, more detailed, and slow-paced instructions in the developer center. So the first article that I'm going to go off of is the Send Your First MMS article. And again, there's full information here about details on authentication, where to get search information. I'm going to move through that a little bit more quickly, but if you want to come back and review it at your own pace, feel free to do so. So to send your first SMS in this article, we actually have a curl example right here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this out to a text editor and then break it down line by line and explain to you what's happening in this statement. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know, curl is a very common application that's installed by default in most every operating system, and it's just simply a tool that allows you to make web requests. And as the messaging API is, of course, an online API, the curl functionality is going to let us actually make requests to it. So the first part of this command that we see here is just the statement curl. That's just letting the application or the terminal know that we're going to use the curl application. And the next portion we can see here is actually the URL that we're going to be calling for the API. And one important note I want to call about call out about the URL here is that it's an HTTPS URL. So we're actually using SSL encryption to secure this endpoint. So you want to make sure you're using HTTPS. If you forget the S and just use HTTP, you're going to get timeouts. So if you start seeing 504 gateway timeouts in your application, first thing to check is that you're using HTTPS. For anyone that's used the API, this will be very familiar. For anyone that's new, it's very simple to understand. Our API URL is api.flowout.com, and all of our messaging APIs for SMS are currently in the V2 space, and we're going to be working at the messages resource. Uh, you'll see a little bit later when we move to MMS that we're actually going to be using the V2.1 API, as there's some fundamental updates that need to be made to the structure to support MMS, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So. The next portion of the curl statement is this dash u flag, which is just a way to let curl know that we're adding authentication information to the statement itself. You can see here in the example that your authentication information is an access key followed by a secret key. 
and your access key is actually your tech prefix, and your secret key is your Flora provided API key. And all this information is actually available in the Flora Manage portal. So let's go ahead and jump into that portal, and I'll grab my credentials out of there. So for all of you, of course, the Manage portal is very familiar. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, your API key is under the Preferences section. And then from Preferences, if you go to API Control, you'll get access to two very important things. Not only does this page provide your API credentials, which is both your username and your password, it's also where you can set up a callback, which is where you set up a webhook that we will post your inbound SMS to. But we'll come back to that in a moment when we tackle the inbound side of this. For now, let's just go ahead and grab our username and drop into the curl statement and do the same exact thing with our password. All right. Now, you can see here that we're also passing the dash capital X flag to curl, which is how you define the HTTP method that you're going to be using to interact with the API. Since we're creating a new outbound message, you need to use the post method, which we've already defined here. Next, you're going to see that you have the dash H flag as well, which is a way to add an additional HTTP header to your curl request. In this case, we're using the content type application JSON header, which is just a way of letting the Flowout server know that we're going to be sending JSON information to it so that it knows how to properly decode and process the body that we're sending to the API. And that JSON body is actually this last section here, which the dash D flag is a way of passing that actual object, that data, that body to the API. And the JSON that you need to pass is actually super simple. There's only three keys for SMS. There's two, which is the phone number that you want to send the message to. And please note that needs to be in 11-digit E.164 format in order to work correctly. You then have the from number. And the from number can be any phone number that you have on your Flowout account. Every phone number on the Flowout network is already enabled for SMS and MMS today. So, so long as you put a phone number that you own into the from field, your message will work just fine. And the last key, of course, is the body, the actual text of the message that you want to send. In the body, we support all character sets as well as emojis. In this example, I'm asking is a simple hello world string, but you could get a lot more complicated with this if you want. All right, so now that we have the entire curl statement combined with the authentication information, let's go ahead and update this two number to one of my mobile testing numbers. And then I'm going to set the from number to one of my numbers off of one of my test Florat accounts. And we're going to use a toll-free number in this case, but you can use the long code just as well. And then the body of the message is just going to be the simple hello world string. So we're going to copy this entire thing and then jump into a terminal session. All right. So we're going to go ahead and paste this into the terminal and hit enter to run the command. Now, we know that we got a successful response back from the API because it returned to us this MDR with an ID. And you can track that ID if you want later. You can actually do a get to the API with that ID and get back your full MDR with all the billing and timestamp information. Whether you want to audit your message records, do any account reconciliation or troubleshooting later, searching that MDR by ID is a really great place to start. Now, let's go ahead and jump into my messages application, which will show us that mobile or that toll free number that we just texted to. And we can see here that we received the hello world string. And so that outbound message was successful. And so with just a really quick curl statement, we're actually able to get up and running with outbound SMS very quickly. Um, I want to pause here and actually make a note as well. You just saw me use curl to send an SMS. In a moment, I'm going to jump into some Python code to receive SMS. But we actually provide SDKs for all of this as well in the major programming languages that you'd expect. We have PHP, .NET, Ruby, Node.js and Python SDKs available for all of this. So if you work in any of those languages, the SDK is a very easy way to get up and running with this as well. So now that we've sent an outbound SMS, I want to go through and show you just how easy it is to set up inbound SMS as well. Now, in a normal produ production environment, you would want to actually have a web server deployed out on the internet that's going to be on all the time, always running and always available for servicing your application. But that takes a little bit of time and a little bit of know-how. So a really quick way to actually get set up easily is with a tool called ngrok. You can see here that I'm going to be using all the instructions from the set up a local SMS environment with ngrok article. And again, this is all in the developer center if you want to review it yourself later. ngrok is really wonderful because it provides a public URL and a secure tunnel that links back to your local machine. So I'm actually going to use ngrok to assign a public URL to my laptop. And then I'm going to run a Python application locally to actually process the message that Flowout's going to post to that URL. So the first thing I'm going to grab out of this article here is this example Flask, example Flask app written in Python. So we're going to go and grab this. And in my terminal session, I'm going to create 
a new file real quick. We'll just call it inbound sns.py. And we can go ahead and open that up. Now I'm just going to paste in that example Flask app code that I got out of the getting set up article. And let's just take a moment to run through this line by line. So the first thing we're doing in this script is actually importing the Flask module. And for anyone that doesn't know, Flask is just a micro framework for web servers. It enables the application to send and receive requests over the web and properly handle the HTTP portion of this. We're also going to be importing the JSON module. As I mentioned before and you've seen, the API interacts over JSON, and so we need to actually be able to encode and decode JSON information. Um, there's some boilerplate set up for the Flask app itself, but the next interesting part is on line eight here. We're actually defining a route on the slash inbound SMS endpoint and saying that this endpoint supports the post method. So anytime a post request is made to the inbound SMS URL, it's gonna run this code. And all the code is doing here is taking whatever JSON gets posted to the endpoint and then printing it out in the terminal. And the last thing I'll point out about this app is that it's going to be running on port 8080. And that's important to remember because when we set up our NGROC tunnel, we need to make sure we're forwarding, forwarding all of the traffic to port 8080 locally. So I'm going to go ahead and save that application and then jump back in my terminal session here and start it up. Oops, Python is not the actual word for Python. You got to type it correctly if you want it to work. All right. Great. So now I have a web server running on my local host waiting to receive traffic on port 8080, but there's still no way for the public internet to access that application. So let's actually go ahead and set the NGROC tunnel to do that. So if you go back into the Developer Center article, uh, we have this command here for setting up an NGROC session. Now, I already have NGROC installed and set up on my machine, but there are instructions linked here for installing it if you don't have it on your machine already. So if you go back to the terminal here, I can run this ngrok command. As soon as you paste it in, it starts up that tunnel session. And you can see here that you actually are provided with a public URL that's forwarding back to your local host. So now that we have a public URL, we can actually set that up as our webhook in the Flowrup portal. So let's go ahead and jump back into the manage portal and set that up. So in the SMS callback section, I'm just gonna paste in that URL that ngrok's provide to us. And as I mentioned before, in that Flask app, we set up to run when things call the inbound SMS endpoint. So we're gonna add that to the end of the URL as well. And when we click enable SMS, it'll get saved into the Flowrout system and become active immediately. So now whenever an SMS is received on any of my Flowrout phone numbers, Flowrout is gonna post a JSON body to that endpoint. All right, so if we jump back into messages and we grab that toll free number that we worked with before, we can text back to Flowrout or back to my Flowrout number rather. So Flowrout's gonna get this message from the mobile operator network and then see that it's to a number that's owned by my test Flowrout account. It's gonna look up that callback URL and then post the message to the endpoint. So if we jump back into the terminal and look at that Python application, we can actually see here that we received that post. You see that there's a record that inbound SMS was posted to and we responded with a 200 okay because we got the message and processed it successfully. And right above that, you can actually see the JSON body that Flowrout posted to us. And of course, it looks very familiar. It looks a lot like the outbound JSON body that you create to send a message. The only difference is that we include the MDRID in this post as well. But you see the body that I wrote, which is hello yourself, the toll-free number we texted to, and that mobile test number that I'm using as well. So with just a few lines of code and a couple of minutes, you can actually set up a very quick demonstration of inbound and inbound SMS. And once you have this, modifying it to actually be capable of handling MMS as well is fairly simple. So let's kill this Python app and then jump back into that curl command we had before for sending an SMS. As I mentioned before, MMS is gonna be on the v2.1 API as there were some updates needed to the JSON in order to facilitate MMS. So we're gonna update our URL to v2.1 and from here, there's actually only one thing that we need to add to the JSON body in order to create an MMS. So we're gonna add one new key here, which is the media URLs key. And the media URLs key can take an array of strings of media objects that are hosted on the public internet. So I'm gonna jump over to an Amazon S3 bucket that I have, and I have an image hosted here that has a public URL private Amazon. We can go ahead and copy that URL. Now, if I drop that URL back into the media URLs key, I'm now telling Flora, hey, I wanna send this message to this person with this body and go ahead and send this image along with it. So assuming I typed everything correctly, which I did, wonderful, we actually just sent out that MMS. You'll notice that the JSON body that you responded to 
is a little bit different than the previous one you had for SMS. It's much of the same information, the same MDR ID and a link to that unique ID, but the JSON structure is actually following the JSONAPI.org recommended format for a JSON structure. So there's a slight modification there, but it's fairly simple and it'll still have all the same information you would expect. So now that we sent that MMS, let's jump back into that messages application. And we can see here that we received a new message and we got a little GIF of the Flowout logo spinning round and round. So you can see that it's very simple to set up outbound MMS once you have a media object stored on the public internet. For the inbound side, as the product isn't just finished right now, I don't have the interface to show you to set the MMS callback, but behind the scenes, I've already set up my MMS callback just like I had set up the SMS callback. When the product launches next week, you're going to have interfaces through both the API and the manage portal for setting your MMS callback, but I've already done that behind the scenes. And behind the scenes, I have that running on a separate web server, and it's running very similar code as the inbound SMS code, only difference being that it actually posts the message into a Slack channel. And I chose to do that because when we post that media URL inbound, Slack will automatically grab that image and render it in line for us. So it just makes it a little bit handier for demonstration purposes. So if I want to send an inbound MMS back, I'm just going to say hello, and let's go ahead and grab a picture of a beer that I drank recently and really loved. Maybe I want to share this with a friend. I can go ahead and include that image. So now I've just sent the word hello and a photo of a bottle of beer that I really like. Now that's going to be sent from the mobile operator network into Flowout, just like with SMS. And Flowout is actually going to host that media object and provide a URL for it to you when we post that JSON to your web endpoint. And then that's going to trigger my application, which is just posting that same message into a Slack channel. So let's go ahead and jump into that Slack channel and take a look here. And we can actually see the full JSON that was posted into the channel. Now, you'll notice that the JSON that gets posted for an inbound MMS is a little bit more complex than for an SMS. Reason being that with a media object, there's additional fields that are very important. The first thing you'll notice is this URL key that actually has the URL for the media object itself. This is what you would want your application to grab and download and store the media off of. In this case, Slack has already rendered that image for us. You can see it's the same exact image that I had sent from the messages application. You also have some basic information about the media object itself, the name of the file, what type of, an, uh, what type of file it was, in this case, the JPEG image, the size of the object, links to the media object. And at the bottom, you can see as well, you still have your MDR ID, as well as all the other basic information about the message that you would want, the to number, the from number, the body, uh, the cost of the message, and what. Really interesting. Um... Uh, components to that to that video, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, yes, definitely. So, you've had this as a as a beta for a couple of months, correct? Right. We started the private beta for this back in the uh, middle to the beginning of July, and it was an invite only for some of our VIP customer set. So, what was your largest use case? What, what were the customers, because I was on, what was I, during the video, I took a little web, look at your website, and there were some really interesting use cases also in the video as well. And so what do you actually see in production as like your big use case? So we don't actually look at uh, the traffic for it, but uh, a lot of the engineers who were looking at integrating it uh, were telling me about some of their use cases and how they were actually able to integrate some of uh, their engineers and, and the people and their friends to start testing it out uh, and sending a lot of different pieces. So in that work, we were getting reports of a huge amount of just random pictures, stuff you'd expect to be posted to uh, Instagram or Facebook or something. Pictures of food, pictures of random buildings, pictures of random pets or, or plants. It's just whatever happened to be around is what a lot of engineers seem to enjoy taking a picture of and then sending it through the system. Uh, we saw once that developer integration stage uh, kind of moved through, uh, we've got more use case reports for things along the lines of uh, sending invoices. So people sending PDF invoices quickly seemed to be an interesting use case. Do you have, are, are there, you know, do you, from, from like a here back, you know, in discussing uh, the use cases with the customers though, like, 
do you see like, I, I, I would think the perfect example would be like an insurance company. Like mm-hmm. that's right up on the website. Like, oh, my car was hit, you know, and then right. all of a sudden you have an insurance company that has the information right there and it's documented. And then what's, I saw, I saw a really, a secondary one, I think it was like a week ago. And I heard um, it was that people, that physicians were using this technology for almost scanning. Um, so they had, they, there was proprietary software installed on the phones, but they were using it, like this type of technology for medical records. Hmm. That's an interesting use case. So I know I've heard uh, a couple of organizations that were invited to the BETAS program to, to do something similar and ask for things like uh, HIPAA compliance in, in order to actually facilitate some of the medical practitioners, some of the uh, clinics for people who are basically asking. So <clears throat> asking, hey, I have this cut. Do I need to come in for stitches or is this something just toss a Band-Aid on it? But I think it's interesting that some of the use cases uh, break into a couple of different, depending on the direction. So there are a lot of businesses I've seen where it's, the use cases is more the business is trying to send outbound MMS about something, either an audio file or uh, a picture or a, a PDF file, and then be able to have SMS come back. So the business is sending out a request, either SMS or MMS, and expecting one or the other to come back from the customer cases. But then there's a flip side, which is kind of the insurance and the car sales, where it's initiating from the external customer to respond back in and send media into like an insurance, like a call center S type environment. Um, things like roadside assistance or something. Take a picture of it, of either the flat tire or the accident, send that in, and then get, hey, a tow truck's two minutes out as a text notification. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, bit of use cases there. So how does the technology actually work? Yeah, so that's actually a really interesting part. Uh, the mobile operators don't really have, uh, ex- there's not a lot of flexibility in how to get the MMS messages inside and outside of the mobile operator networks. So a lot of them were built using uh, SMPP as the custom, or the public facing interface for it. But SMPP is limited on the body size. So the mobile operators have basically used um, an MMS uh, protocol, let's say MM4 as an example, mm-hmm. to be able to do something like email. So it's basically SMTP with extra headers and bodies, and that's how a lot of the MMS functionality works. So you get that two ways. But the difficulty part is there aren't really any good open source or MMS uh, gateways, MMSCs is what a lot of mobile op- operators call it. So what Flowroute's come through is actually built out and customer facing is HTTP posts, which most devs prefer working with. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's much easier to do that. I mean, as SMPP is you know it's, it's it's not it's not something for the weak of heart. That's for sure. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, so basically what we do is we get the inbound uh, MM4 uh, from mobile operators. We decode it. We, we run it through uh, any of the – is it just completely random spam? Think email spam. Uh, is it through from a, a real mobile operator? We translate that into a URL link. In, in this particular case, the, the web callbacks, when you actually build it out, will pass uh, an encrypted S3 link to you in the callback and then let you fetch the message from AWS S3. And so tell me a little bit about your network architecture. <laughs> oh, um, any particular questions on there or just more generic? Well, I, I guess in terms as it, as it entails to MMS and SMS, um, you know, more particularly, I, I, I know that you uh, did some work on the free switch libraries for that um, along with some other people as well. So it's always, it's always good to hear uh, some of that um, from, from the contributing authors. So, yeah. So actually what we, so, what Flowout's done is we're exposing the HTTP endpoints for messaging and kind of trying to simplify the differences between SMS and MMS. 
because there are a lot of use cases where the uh, where the conversation will flip back and forth between them. So we try and nearly unify that coming back to uh, the customer. From there, uh, we deal with the translation to figure out uh, hyper network wise which mobile operator it needs to go to. Um, does it need to go over? Does that operator prefer SMPP or another interface? Um, if it's a message or an MMS, then we'll deal with the translation to send it to MM4 or one of the other MMSC protocols and, and do that exchange. And then on the inbound, we receive it from all the different gateways, from all the different operators. And then we look at how does the customer have their stuff configured and then deal with the translation gateway there. Uh, there's an interesting module. The module you're referencing is a mod SMS flow route that I worked on at the beginning of last year, which basically would be a flow route or uh, a free switch module that actually talks to the flow route uh, webhooks in order to translate the flow route webhooks into free switch uh, SMS events. Uh, it doesn't yet have MMS support, but it is something that there's going to be pull request in the near future for. Well, we'd love to hear about that. It does. Now, anybody who was at KluCon this year, uh, during the presentation and the dangerous demo, there was actually a, an Easter egg hidden in that about letting the dogs out, which sent to Kathleen and Brian's cell phone uh, different uh, dog pictures uh, to, uh, to their mobile numbers, but from local and toll-free numbers. So we were getting an early private uh, Easter egg out there. So anybody who wants to see uh, potential Easter eggs or enjoys that type of a hunt, come out to ClueCon 2018, and we'll see what's shared then. Well, and then earlier you mentioned that you have a promotion for the Yes. Animal. Yes, thanks. thanks for reminding me about that one. Because we do. There is a... Any developers uh, that want to build an app uh, using FlowRoute's MMS, uh, bonus points if you include SMS component as well. There's a draw or there's a competition for $300 of the FlowRoute credit, a box of FlowRoute swag, past and present, and then will also be featured in a developer spotlight on the FlowRoute blog. All you have to do is put together an app that uses FlowRoute's MMS. Again, bonus points if you can include SMS in the demonstration. Publish the code to GitHub and send us an email at devcomp at flowrout.com. D-E-V-C-O-M-P, so for dev competition, at flowrout.com. The entry deadline is midnight Seattle time, November 9th. And we will definitely let you guys know um, for November 15th who we've selected as the winner. That's great. All right, we have a quick question from IRC. Oh, if I can interrupt for just a second. Uh, in the UK, we're seeing MMS dying in terms of usage because of other technologies and the fact that MMS generally costs money to an end user. Is this different in the US and is MMS still popular? Actually, that's a great point. So when, we're, when Flowers has been building out and working with a bunch of different uh, providers, both the US and uh, non-US providers, there is an interesting use difference. A lot of European providers um, have relatively high charges for MMS usage. For in the US, a lot of mobile operators include unlimited SMS and MMS um, in the different plans. Or MMS is considered a standard, like in kind of the SMS bucket. So in the US, we're seeing significantly more usage of it. Though you're right, there are other applications, uh, more over the top, things like WhatsApp and the like, that people are using for exchanging that media instead of MMS. But for a lot of businesses that want to enable their business line, let's say a call center number, an 800 number, you don't really have an option to use those over the top applications. So this is one step towards being able to message enable uh, for business use cases. And you know, that's actually, that's a very interesting point because 
you know, typically um, end user um, is free and there is always the commercial aspect for the corporate uh, business and they, and they would have to, you know, pay for those services. Um, Any other questions? For those of you watching on YouTube, if you have any questions, you can post them in the live chat and we will uh, pass them along. And then those of you in on the call here, if you'd just like to unmute yourself, you can ask away. I see some familiar names called in. All right, I believe. I'll go ahead and ask a question. I've got one for you, William. Mm -hmm. you can. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, on the uh, MMS uh, and the mm -hmm. image sizes that you can send, uh, or right. the uh, media files that you can send there, what kind of uh, size limits are there mm -hmm. on doing that? What's the say the biggest uh, you know video or something like that that's uh, supported for be for sending? Ah, good question. So it depends on the operator. So. It, it really depends there, and a lot of the operators, from what we've seen, have not standardized on a maximum size limit. Safely, what we what I've seen is about 750k uh, for outbound size. Now, for mobile devices trying to send videos back in uh, to mobile originated uh, MMS, I've seen some larger audio size and larger files being able to work through their way through the network. But 750K is about uh, about a good, uh, reliable setting. Well, from a, from a technical standpoint, it's, it's that the actual media gets put up on a CDN, correct? Right, correct. And then the operator actually pulls it down and then uh, deals with the delivery. Yeah, so we, when we talk about the, like, the question that the, the question earlier, I mean, essentially, they may not have an MMS fee, but they have a data fee associated with it. Cool. All right. I believe we are reaching our time for today. Uh, thank you, William, for coming in and joining us. Thank you, Flo Route, for sharing your awesome news with us today and running through sort of your demo. Uh, for those of you that are interested in that competition, you can visit the link below the video today, and we will have that um, available for you. And uh, feel free to reach out to Flora if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate the opportunity. You've been watching ClueCon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or visit us online. Please follow the FreeSwitch team on Twitter and Facebook by visiting our site at freeswitch.org.